we'll go from there. Okay, we are live. Hello, everyone. This is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel. Welcome to the Jeet Kune Do Dialogues, episode number 243 with uh, Mark Stewart, the mad professor. Now, I am not sure how many times he's been on the dialogues because he and I, we, 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 we spent time with Dean, with Dean Franco. Um, is this your third time with me, Mark? This is the third dialogue, but I've been on a couple other shows that you um, put together as improv shows with a, uh, uh, a panel. Right, right. Okay. All right. Makes sense. Okay. So as you guys are logging in, if you'd be kind enough to say where you're logging in from, hit the like button and feel free to continue doing so throughout the dialogue. If you're watching the simulcast over on the YouTube, please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell as well. If you enjoy my work and you'd like to support the program, please visit jkdrebel.com click on the rebel gear link and that's where you'll see stuff like this the four tenets of jeet kune do t-shirt long sleeve short sleeve sweatshirt hoodie uh coffee mug all that good stuff but of course the best thing you can do is to share this video and spread the word about the jeet kune do dialogues <laughs> so i think it's safe to say mr stewart you are somebody who does not need any introduction um, uh -oh. on, on, <laughs> on Facebook in, in, in the JK, in this JKD world that we inhabit. So, um, yeah, I don't know how that happened, but yeah, you're right. Well, you know, um, we all got voices, man. I think that's what it is. We all got voices, you know, there was a time when, and you know, this even better than I do, because I've never been featured in any of the, um, the martial art magazines. I've been in the martial art business magazines, but like in the martial art, the 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 the, the normal magazines. Yeah. Right? You you um you appeared a number of times. Um, yeah, I went out of my way to become an author. Um, in fact, it was the only reason I went on to college was to learn uh how writing skills so I could write articles for the magazines. Yeah. Well, yeah. I should do that. <laughs> I think you're way surpa you've surpassed my articulation. I don't think oh no no no! I sh I should really I should learn how to write because then then I think um, I think my you know why I say that because the the Jeet Kune Do that give me your take on this the Jeet Kune Do dialogues channel on the YouTube has over close to two thousand subscribers. Hmm. The I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcasts, however has less than 500. Mm, that's weird. Right? Now, the broadcast, as you know, is me talking to the camera on a topic. Yeah. The dialogues is me interviewing somebody, so to speak, having a yeah. conversation with somebody. Yeah. Do you think that's what it is? It's that pe people people prefer to see two people, to, to listen in on a conversation between others rather than have somebody lecture them? Yeah, I guess it's because it's only your point of view that you're you're sharing on the other ones. But I, I love those things. I mean, I, you know, I, I have my point of view, but then mm -hmm. I find people that I'm interested in their point of view. So it's important for me to continue to learn from them, you know? Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, that, that that's that's the thing. Have you seen any of the recent ones? Um, uh, 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 Jeremiah Gill, he's 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 had um, one about no. Ron Kosakowski, because I know you know Ron. Yep. Right? Yep. Ron put, and, and actually he and I were, were, were talking a little bit just a, a couple hours ago. He, the one about, did you see the one about, um, would you say that Jeet Kune Do is a Chinese art or an American art? Did you see that one? Yeah. I did on that. <laughs> yeah. What, what, <laughs> what did you think of that when you first, when you first saw it? Uh, well, that was a nice troublemaking post. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah i have this term for people that are really into the chinese uh root of uh jeet Kune Do. I, call, I call it they they have a they're into chinese justice <laughs> well okay so but i pick it on my chinese ethnic chinese students when i say that because um hey well that actually this ties into the post that instigated this um dialogue when yes. i post about the difference between Ted Lukai Lukai and Ted Wong, it's an interesting subject, but it wasn't my point of why. Post, post, mm -hmm. post. Uh, 
I wanted to share the human side of the story of how students will leave you when you stop doing exactly what you did before and continue to grow. Or let's say right. a person will continue to follow and the other ones will disappear because they want to do it the old way, you see? Yeah. And yeah. So it's a phenomenon, you know? It, it, it is. And I don't think that it will ever end. No, never. It's human nature. You know? Simply the, no. the, so many things that you and I have discovered separately and together and some a handful of other friends, none of this thing, none of these things will ever change. I think it's our job to understand that it won't, mm -hmm. to not take it too seriously and um, to move forward. So for gr the, all of our growth, you know, that's just about it. Well, well, I, I told Jeremiah just last night that G Kondo is the art of focusing on what's personally important to you and learning how to ignore what everybody else is doing. I would agree. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, cause, cause he was, he was, um, he, he was, I, I guess it was a thought experiment for him, I, I would say. And it was about the lack of commercial, what people call commercial, what I call professional success in, in Jeet Kune Do, that yep. it's not widespread, you know? So it's like, there's probably no Taekwondo schools anywhere in the world that don't make money, you know, but, but, and, 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 um, you know, but Jeet Kune Do, you have probably more hobbyists than yeah. you have, um, full-time instructors or whatever. Yeah. And, um, well, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter really, you know, I mean, I always kind of was worried about it, you know, why did I choose this? And, <laughs> Why did I choose this art yet chose it as a career at the same time? It was rather foolish. That's what I thought. But no, you know, yeah. not. Um, what, what I just had this thought today, and it just happened to be thinking about it, about, um, you know, the genres, the multi-genre approach to teaching versus like choosing one or maybe two predominant ones. And we've yeah. you, you discussed this before. I've always tried to be that person that teaches something in the middle to where the students can go in the direction of the different genres. So in a sense, I was kind of, it, it serves, it's not a jack of all trades, it's not fair to say, it's just that you give them a solid base and you discuss constantly the differences between the genres. And mm -hmm. discuss it enough and point out what the differences are, then they will make a choice to go over to a certain one predominantly. And yeah. that's what I have of that. And, uh, but now personally to satisfy myself because I'm in selfish mode now, mm -hmm. it, because I'm just at the age now to where um, I know what I want. Right. And I'm not, it's not that I'm not open to other things. I constantly am open to other things, but it's difficult to impress me. Yeah. So, so anyway, back to the point, I'm more comfortable teaching this is going to sound weird, either super large groups or privates. We, you know, you discussed like six to 12 students in the backyard. Yeah. yeah. Uh, at first I was like keen on that, that that's the one that's the best, but not anymore. That's not, that's not really what turns me on anymore. Um, that's, that's many, an interesting many, dynamic. Many problems in that microcosm. Yeah. That's an interesting dynamic. Um, I, now, okay, so what impacts that uh, if if it's your livelihood, does that ha does that play a part in it or at, is it just preference? I no longer care about making money. It's not that I don't charge. It's right. like, before it was all about money. Am, am I doing it right to make enough money? And the, apparently right. not. I wasn't. <laughs> 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 but I really don't care anymore. It's yeah. I, it's be, it's about friendship and like-minded people. That's what it's about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you know. Uh, well, that reminds me of what I was, what I have been over the past few Wednesdays trying to explain to people. That's how JKD started. Yeah, that's yeah. really. The, if if we could if we could use the phrase the true nature of Jeet Kune Do, Yeah, it's that. Wasn't it Taki Kimura who said something about? Jeet Kune Do being about having a few friends who get together, or, yep. or, or, right? It was some something like that, and yep. um, yeah. So I think a lot of people do not understand that, 
And so they think of perhaps, again, give me your take on this. Is this why there are people who will say, well, we teach Jeet Kune Do as that's one of the arts or one of the styles that we offer. We also offer Kempo Karate, uh, this style of Kung Fu, Jiu Jitsu, Muay Thai, and this and this. Jeet Kune Do is one of the arts that we offer. Yeah. So, but what's, what's the question about that? So the, the question is, is that because JKD grew beyond backyard, small group of friends getting together, right? Because it grew beyond that. Is that yeah. how it, is, yeah, I, is that how it became just another yeah, art? Why people were hungry for the certification because of that. Yeah. 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 Look, I, I let me admit at this point, you know, I was hungry for the certification too. And again, um, it was stupid to be hungry for. It. And, and, you know, the, some of the best times in my life in karate were as a brown belt. And I was disappointed to become a black belt. There wasn't really, it's not what I thought it would be, you know? <laughs> yeah. And the, and the same thing with certification. I yeah. only got better because I train and I teach and right. my students, I, my students are my teachers and we teach each other. And that's the only reason. And getting back to what we were saying before, at this point, I'm more comfortable with teaching either combative sports or combatives in the genres. I'm not into being in the recreational martial arts instructor anymore. Right. I, I don't enjoy it unless it's clearly defined that it's fitness only. But if uh -huh. it's one, but if it's floating, if it's floating in there and like, Oh, I'll teach you everything. You know, uh, that, I'm yeah. not interested. Or that may contradict what I said earlier, but it's not meant to contradict what I said earlier. Okay, um, go a little bit deeper into this thing about of, about fitness, because that was another that was another thing that was on my mind. Literally, it was on my mind. I, I met up with an old student of mine this morning for 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 um, Panera brunch, and we were talking about it. Right? Let me tell you why. I have another friend in LA who is complaining every day about the, 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 the plethora of videos online with people doing all their these wide swinging punches, right? Hitting the bag and yep. getting a workout. It's because it's fitness martial arts that they're doing. Yeah, it is. And I mean, right? they could... It could stand to use some coaching on correct alignment just because it's physics. You know, you still have yeah. to do it way even when it's for fitness. But my point is that when it's when you define that it's for fitness, the instructor will go out of his way to make it a comprehensive fitness workout that's built around martial arts techniques, which still should be sound structurally and and the science. You know, the science has to be there. <laughs> your favorite. Your favorite. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, somebody, somebody, I think it was Joe Ferris in, in, uh, in Ireland who said, um, it's the get fit, but don't get hit martial arts. I like that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Get fit, but don't get hit. I think that, that, right? that's my, my, uh, daily strategy in life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so that's something that i kind of realized that um you know with the with the young people of today everybody wants to be in shape and so if you offer and, and it's not even that you're offering fitness kickboxing like we used to in the old days yeah you're offering martial arts it's, it's supposed to be a legitimate martial art class. However, its emphasis is on the workout. Yeah, yeah. Because you're trying to cater to that that demographic that wants to be in shape. And that's what it should be. That's what it should be, yeah. Well, so, so but, but then don't we lose what you just talked about in terms of like technical proficiency and what no. have you? No, it's, I'm just saying that it, it's not strict enough. It needs to, the, yeah. the, it has to raise up to the level of doing it correctly. Well, why, why aren't they doing it correctly, do you think? 
It's easier not to. That's why. <laughs> yeah, look, uh, you know, uh, I think I told you the story before. I started teaching it fitness kickboxing in, um, well, yeah, in the 90s. I taught it everywhere in L.A., but um, at right. gyms and bodies in motion in particular. And um, so I got divorced. <laughs> You know, I get married and I get divorced. It's kind of like a hobby. And uh, so. Well, you're um, perfecting the art. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't take it too seriously. I mean, but no, I'm I'm just joking. I've been married now for uh, how long now? Um, 18 years. So that'll be the last one. <laughs> and yeah. um, so, but anyway, back to the point. And so I moved back to my mom's house because I do that occasionally. And um uh, when I got divorced and I spent about four months in Kalamazoo, Michigan or Richland, Michigan, where I'm at right now, because my daughter's going to high school here, um, teaching fitness kickboxing at five or six gyms. I was busy as heck. Yeah. And Tybo just came out, Billy Blanks, right? Yep. So my, my joke at the class was you, you've all heard of Tybo, right? And they go, yeah. I go, well, this is white bow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so back then it was a good joke, but now I'm right. sure it would fly yeah. to Hey, you you know you know you know what would be another joke that you can use it? Mexican uh, kickboxing. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> right? uh -huh. The Daniel Lee story, that's what you're referring yeah. to. <laughs> we'll have to bring that up again because that's a good story. Yeah. Uh, right. So anyway, my point is I taught technical proficiency to my students and they could kick ass the right way, but it was all fitness oriented, but they knew how to hit pads like you, right. you know? Right. Yeah. 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 Um, and that's what the industry needs to raise to that standard. So but there's no, there's nobody, there's nobody policing these things then? Is that, well, is that? I'm ready. I'm getting ready to talk to, uh, Joe Biden about it. No, I'm just joking. Okay. I'm, I'm, joking. Sure, he'll, I'm sure he'll understand. Yeah. But, you know, I'll stop talking about it. Now. All right. Yeah. Um, back to my point. Um, the I wouldn't gloss, even though they're good, technically proficient and doing things the right way, it's a means for them if they get interested in the self-defense aspects or competition to have some sound a sound direction to go into it is for fitness primarily okay mm -hmm. but it would allow them to, to jump over to something and but it's not selling them the fact that oh you'll be able to defend yourself too when you learn this no nope, i'm not saying that i'm saying that if you decide to move in the direction of a genre that focuses on self-defense then you'll be ready to go right yeah that's yeah i I, re I remember my uh my partner and i at the time in in the literature that we had for our fitness kickboxing program at the at the very end it, in the description it said uh something about introduce you to the basics of self-defense yeah you know but all all the all the verbiage before that was about the fitness benefits of it and 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 what have you because we we try we tried to be we tried to be honest with you know um because we I didn't did see same thing, Dwight. That's exactly how I I I, yeah. um, I explained it to people. Is that most of it would be fitness oriented, but like a, maybe a, a, the last third of class would be devoted to non no nonsense self defense, something of that nature. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, like you said, I I had students who, um, you know, and a, a few times they moved out of the area, and so they started training at other places, and they would get in touch with me and tell me how at their first class, the the owner or the instructor walks over and says, obviously you train somewhere else because you got good form. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I train with Dwight Woods. And then the guy will go, oh, so I'll just leave you alone then. <laughs> <laughs> You're making those instructors jobs easy for them. They like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, okay. But we have to talk about, like, as you said, the human side. Yeah. Right. Of, of your of your story. So because I, I um, you know, I think there are people who will say, oh, Mark Stewart, oh, he's always making jokes and he's always having fun and, and what have you. But I think that I, I, I think that there's <laughs> I'll make a joke of it. 
there's the deep side of to you. <laughs> well, I would call it schizophrenic myself. How's that? <laughs> I mean, okay. I have a whole theory about that too, my man. Professor theory is that you know, like, you know, the bodhis, the bodhisattvas, you know, all the different um, archetypes of um, the the Buddhas, right? Mm -hmm. Is something is something uh, akin to the psych psychology's analysis or psychiatry, you know, talking about different personas that a person has within them or what they'll yeah. die as schizophrenic, right? So I really say okay, because I'm the mad professor, that you should embrace it to a certain extent, that you don't have to be the same all the time because there is that one thing that is you, in my opinion, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you're able to perform. And I'm not talking about acting. I'm talking about performance as in getting your points across in different ways, seriously, humorously, um, passionately da 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 and you know yeah. uh, don't be afraid of that shit you don't have to excuse me there i goes the s word sh word and uh, dean sorry dean <laughs> <laughs> sorry big dean blanco big dean blanco yeah um I, I i i think i think i get what you mean because there is the there is the me that teaches class yeah. who is definitely related to the me who does these podcasts because it's the same topic yeah you know but then outside of that topic there's another me you yeah. know yeah but but um there, but there's there's a passion that runs that runs the gamut <laughs> let me ask you this have you seen the um have you seen the recent kanye west videos not at all. The, I'm not the, interv the interviews or what have you? No, but my some people have told me about it. Like I said, don't tell me about it. I don't want to hear about it. Okay. No, okay. but you. What, 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 why? Why? Why did? Why did they tell? Did did they? Did they say something to you about? Well, I'm watching the Kanye West interview, and he reminds me of you. Well, no, no, but no. What, you know, maybe that's why I don't like to listen to him because he's as nutty as I am. You know, something like that. Well, I, I'll I'll tell you this: there are two main differences between me and Kanye West. Yeah. One is I have much better control over my ADHD than yeah. he does. Yeah. Right. And then there's a slight difference in our bank account. Uh, yeah. Tell me you about. Know? It. Yeah. Right. But yeah. But yeah. Uh, but I I watch him and I go, holy crap. Right. Yeah. What he reminds me of, he reminds me of myself 30 years ago. Uh -huh. where I could not, I could not keep the thoughts. Uh -huh. You know, it, it's like, it's like every thought that came had to be expressed verbally. Uh, yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah. Right. Everything. And, and so you never finished a thought mm. or a conversation. Yep. And um, which is why it's interesting because now it brings me back to the whole thing about writing. I remember Dan Kennedy saying that you should write, I think it was something like write the way that you speak. So I made the mistake <laughs> of, of cutting off sentences, right? <laughs> I'm going on to a new, a new sentence. <laughs> So you're doing a blog article and you just stop. <laughs> oh, okay. <All> right? Yeah. <laughs> but then years later, I thought, okay, I don't think that's what he meant literally. Right. But yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so here's the thing that, uh, that came up recently. It was about, um, this was Jeremiah's thing also. Is it okay to disagree with Bruce Lee? Yeah. Now, right. So, so, well, I don't know if it's so much disagreeing with Bruce Lee because I don't know that there's anything to disagree with because JKD has built into it the capacity for becoming creative in your own right, doesn't it? It does, but I feel I mentioned this to you before is that. 
because of Bruce, Bruce was so heavily into philosophy and, and that a lot of things appeared or sounded like, um, you know, paradox to people or, you know, conflict. Yeah. Again, to me, it's just a paradigm, right? And, right. Uh, but I see part of the messes. I wouldn't blame Bruce, but if you have to blame him for anything, it's it's expecting that they would un people would understand where he's coming from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, isn't isn't the answer to everything to every question about Jeet Kune Do, Isn't the answer not to? Yeah, correct. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's it. That's it. You know, and um, I, I remember I came I make, I came across that that um, that anecdote about him. You know, they asked him, "What's the difference between hard style kung fu and soft style kung fu?" And he says, "Not two, right? Whether it's a real story or not." Um, not but but I came across that. Gosh, I must I must have been I must have been like fourteen years old or something, hmm. right? And I was like, "That's it, that's it, right there," huh? because. To me, that is, you see that element of duality all over the place. Yeah. You know? um, <clears throat> like when people have the conversation about, oh, what's your sign, right? Okay, so I'm born June 2nd, so that makes me Gemini. They go, oh, okay, so you're, so, so, so the twins and, and two-faced and, and double-minded or whatever, whatever. I go, wait, hang on a second. There are so many other astrological symbols that have that duality <laughs> nature. To them. So, so what are you what are you talking about? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Right? So many, so many of them ha yeah. have that du that dual element. So, See, I think I think what you mark, you know what it is. It goes back to something you said earlier about the genres and and offering the genres and what have you. Let me ask you this: the value of Picking the one or two, and going deep. Uh, versus that, that's what, that's the next thing I was going to say. That's what I prefer to do right now is is combative sports and combatives, and go yeah. and go deep in both of them. Be able to jump from one to the other. Now, some people will say that's impossible because MMA is not like the street or the street like MMA. Blah blah blah. Well. No, they're not, but they're close. They're pretty damn close, and it just needs a little bit of a, a, a an adjustment to go from one to the other. What well, didn't didn't they see? Didn't they see uh, Henzo Gracie take the guy down on in in the New York subway? Yeah, well, you know, the, the, there there are those positive stories like that, but there's plenty of the negative ones as well. To where um, these MMA guys, right? I'll just use that. Um, they're so overconfident, and this is not all of them. This is just the specific specific negative stories stories yeah. that I've seen. Yeah. So have no need to be on high alert. They, you know, awareness is the key to survival. And when you talk about the three timing factors of before, during, and after, right, mm -hmm. which come from obviously, but it's a universal principle. It's applied to that that, that we perceive. So before means it, it'll never happen because you're aware you don't do stupid shit that will get you in trouble right. during me a little stupid that day reacted a little bit late and there's going to be some kind of convergence you're going to react as something is happening and after means that um you either got hit <laughs> and knocked to the ground and possibly even killed <laughs> mm -hmm. you know and then, then your body floats up and you see what's going yeah. on <laughs> or or after means that you avoided it or you escaped it right so you see, these things are not just before, during, and after. Um, the, the three timing factors is a super, super big deal in so many ways, man. Mm -hmm. And, and um, I kind of lost my track of thought because we were talking about, oh, yeah, we're talking about the negative uh, story. So these dudes are so confident because they they kick ass in the octagon or, or the cage or whatever you want to call it, and they're the bad, baddest ass at the gym that right. they – Feel that they need that awareness and they get killed by knives and they get killed by things and it's, yeah. it's because they've lost the need to be aware yeah well they they missed the connection between combat sport and combatives because the two should inform each other correct right certainly right? yep yeah that's the connection right there yeah. so so 
so why would why would why would anybody say oh well how, how can you do that i mean it, to me it makes sense yeah um because again these i mean what we face here is black and white thinkers versus um integrated thinkers you know we mm. think yeah i mean it's just obvious that a lot of us are very different than each other and uh, that's obvious that's the obvious one you see it on i love jeet kundo i mean that's the obvious place we see that <laughs> right but i I love that place. <laughs> I've been terms with it. I've been in and out of it, but I've come right. to terms. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I say, uh, talking about the other, the flip the script a little bit about. Um, so if you talk about combatives, right? And now this is not all the combatives, guys, because there's some super athletes in combatives. Okay. However, I would say that what combatives could pick up from the MMA guys is that it's athletics. Yeah. Being super tip top shape. And uh, and they are. There's a lot of them that are. So you see that the merging is happening, and the, the jump from one to the other is not that big anymore for the people that know. Okay, for the general public, oh, oh, they're totally different. Let's fight about this now. You know, these guys are Democrats. These guys are Republicans. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm with Tulsi Gabbard. <laughs> oh, I love Tulsi. I love Tulsi. Yeah. I'm with <laughs> politics but i love tulsi but i'm, but yeah. I, I'm so skeptical of tulsi because she's a politician career uh, career politician yeah i don't yeah. trust a career politician because uh, for whatever reason but i don't trust any of them somebody somebody asked me why uh once uh why is joe rogan so obsessed with tulsi gabbard i go well let's see she's cute yeah she's smart yeah. and she trains right i yeah. mean what more what more do you need yeah, and right. apparently it appears to speak her mind. Yeah. So that's yeah. really what I like about it is that she's willing to say, look, I was a part of something that I no longer feel comfortable in. And so has, um, this is going to be my last talk about politics. So has Bill Maher. Bill Maher said, no. They said, well, you've changed. You've changed, Bill. I said, no, I haven't changed. They changed. <laughs> Yeah. Um, why, why is it that we're not supposed to talk about politics when, when, pol when everything is political? No, I know. I, I just, um, uh, I just want to be folk. I don't, because, um, I prefer to be friends instead of uh, pissing people off. I guess that's why. Yeah. I, I never, I never could understand, but I came to, to like Washington DC politics. I came to that pretty late in life. Um, for for most of my life, I was completely apolitical. Yeah, you know, and uh, and and so then when so when I came into the Jeet Kune Do world, um, and then a few years after I came into the Jeet Kune Do world, Jeet Kune Do politics came along. And I was like, <laughs> holy crap! <laughs> right? I was like, holy crap! But now, okay, you so let's we we got to talk the two Ted's because. Yeah. Get to that subject. <laughs> because, be, be, yeah, because think about this. I remember, I, I'm pretty sure it was a 1985 article um, with Ted Lukai Lukai. And he was the Jeet Kune Do renegade because he opened up a commercial school mm. and was going to give it a go. Yep. And everybody was like, He's crazy, but he but he also went on the road and was the first to get videos out and in products as well. Because because that that first series with uh, Tree and Blaze that was nineteen eighty two, wasn't it? it? Yeah, it was around that time, and that's what mm -hmm. that's was my big inspirations to move to the West Coast was that series. Ah, yeah, I got that series after I started. Yeah. With um with Sifu Dan in '83, right? I got that series, but it was instrumental. Yeah, it was instrumental, man. Yeah, I totally agree. And you know, Ted was teaching in San Diego as well at the time. I think he had about three locations at one time at that point, and um, he was hopping around. He was busy, right? And uh, he was real healthy then, and um, yeah. so. You know, my sister lived in San Diego, and that's where I planned to move to. So I was hoping Ted would still be there when I got there, but he wasn't, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so that so then you you tracked him down and you followed him. Yeah, well, I mean, Louis Campos is that conduit, right? So Louis, um, right. Louis came down to San Diego and I made some stakes for him, and I started cruising up to um, from San Diego to L.A. and spend the night at Randy Williams' house and at Louis' house, and we trained all weekend. I went there every week, and um, uh -huh. nineteen. That was 87. Yeah, 87. Yeah, 87 and 88. So for about two years. Then Randy moved to Singapore. I moved to Laguna Beach and started at the Inosanto Academy with um, Guru Dan during the right. weeks, sporadically, and then uh, every Guru Ted and a Sunday private. Yeah. Right. Could you encapsulate um, Lukai Lukai's philosophy in... in a sentence or two? Yeah, um, a, a dynamic balance and integration of tradition and progressive, traditional and progressive. So, not two, huh? Not two. <laughs> however, however, you learned them separately before you integrated them. Right. As the, right. As the first year. Ah, and, okay. and I would say also that it was kind of rare for Guru Ted to share his progressive method um, in the public. It was more of him teaching the resources that he learned from that he taught, and then, mm -hmm. and then every now and then you'd get a glimpse of him, mm -hmm. something of that nature. Now, when you say when you said the two separately, the traditional and the progressive, yes, or the yes. or, or the Kali and the JKD, uh, both of those things. <laughs> so and, again, not two. <laughs> I, but that's why I say, but no, you could you could pair binaries right along the yeah. different. He did, and then of course, <laughs> I created them all. Of, of you know, they all led to that total understanding. You know that because it. Right. Once you're educated enough, you will understand it's all the same. Now, when I say that, that it's all the same, it's still not all the same. <laughs> <laughs> but when you be, let me, I'll walk it back a little bit. I'll just use myself as an example. And I'll take my two primary influences. And I'll, I won't talk about weaponry yet, but it's included. But I'm just going to talk about empty hand. Okay. Uh, no weapons. So the two primary influences that in the long run now have influenced my weaponry as well are Jeet Kune Do and Kali. They are primaries that function as the hybrid. And then, and I've had many good, look, it's all, the two Ted's are the most important people in, in my understanding of martial arts, but I've had a lot of good, a lot of good friends, teachers in, in other arts that taught me great stuff. Mm -hmm. I only keep facets of it. I only keep the gems of what I consider the gems from it. And then I bring them into that Kali JKD union and modify them to a certain extent to fit into my understanding of that union. That's what I do. So there are people who will say, well, who do you think you are to modify what you were taught? Yeah, they, they, on Dean's show the other night, I got that. And I, and I said, I'll do whatever the d damn thing I wanted. Question, please. <laughs> yeah, you know, dude, look, uh, I'm old now, okay? So I can speak my mind, damn it. And <laughs> I was inspired by Tim Tackett's interview with Matt Thornton on uh, SBG, uh, straight glass mm -hmm. interview. Um, and Tim just laid it out. It, it, the same the way he did with you. I said, you know what? Right. I'm going to like Tim Tackett, I'm going to take over the be the new Tim Tackett. Yeah, well, I I was I was uh, I was advised, um, and I was happily advised, right? If you're gonna if you're gonna talk with Tim Tackett, just let him talk. Yeah, you know that's how you get stuff from. Just let him talk. Yeah, I like let that. Him, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he 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 was one of those who. The effect that he had on me was um, forcing me to become 
forcing me to become more forthright because I come from a culture where you you you're taught to hold back yeah you know you're taught to hold back you're taught to put on the stiff upper lip yeah right and reveal as little as possible uh, 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 what have you that's and, quite, uh, you're quite Asian dude <laughs> <laughs> well yeah uh, but but with Tackett I was like wow this guy I mean from day one from day one, you know, and then as he got older, it was even more pronounced, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And um, but that's great because, see, I'm still at the level where. I, I will I, I, I will say certain things in public and then I'll say not necessarily different things, but I'll say more in private. Well, yeah, you'll say you'll say them in a different way to where it comes yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. Yeah. I've experienced that with you. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, because again, like like you said earlier, I, I think that in public you should aim to be friends with as many people as possible. I'm not. I'm not, not against anyone. I mean, I can. Right. There's two people, martial arts wise, because I've done this since 1974. So. All my friends and enemies are in martial arts. <laughs> <laughs> but I've only had two people really that I can that I really didn't like very well. And yeah. However, I don't hate them, but right. they did things that hurt me. Um either either directly or indirectly and I don't take you know, when it comes to being attacked, I either attack more ferociously or I'll just disengage. Those are the only two mm -hmm. things that sit in the middle in that circumstances. Yeah. And so anyway, um yeah. Well hey that that's that's bound to happen. Yeah. Um in in a thing in a in, in a thing like Jeet Kune Do where where there's there's so little policing, right? You know, like so people people will be in charge of <laughs> People will be in charge of their Jeet Kune Do organization, which is not an organization. Yeah. So there's no police in. So anybody can do almost anything to yeah. anyone, yeah. regardless of the level of relationship, right, between whoever and whoever. Yeah. And they get away with it. <laughs> Real quick. And this is, uh, this is people that watched my show with Dean the other day as well. And I want to explain to you now. My eyes look terrible because I have very bad allergies when I'm in Michigan. And I forgot. I haven't been here for three years and I'm suffering big time. And what's um, the temperature? Um, well, it's supposed I mean it, it's gotten like down to 40. So isn't that you know, I mean, that's like freezing to me, but it hasn't killed <laughs> hasn't killed the pollen yet, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm suffering all the time, and um, I mean, people think I've been smoking weed before the show, which is partially true. But I didn't smoke it; I ate it, but not before this show or or Dean's show. But I mean, you know, uh, but well, they would guess that that's why my eyes are messed up. But I guarantee you, they're because right. they. I'm much more handsome when I'm stoned than I am without. Yeah, well, yeah, and you're you're far you're far enough away from the camera; nobody can even really tell. So I told you then. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, we, we, we woke up the other morning and it was 72 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, we were in shock, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's 6 AM and it's 72 degrees. It's, yeah. uh, it's definitely fall in, uh, Florida. Yeah. Man. Um, so, okay. Hey, can, Dwight, can you give me, uh, just a second? Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. So while, while Mark does that, um, let me uh, tell you guys that uh, next, um, next Friday, we're probably going to start early. Um, the idea was put into my head and I jumped on it because there are certain people who are very happy anytime that I do uh, a Friday dialogue earlier than 6 p.m. Eastern time. So uh, next Friday we'll be on with uh, 
one of my new newest um, JKD Facebook friends, uh, Joe Ferris. Um, I'm going to have to confirm something with him, though. I think he and I spoke a couple of years ago, and and I swear he had no interest in coming on my show. Right? So I'm going to tease him about that. But yeah, I should be on with him uh, next uh, next Friday, probably um, a lot earlier than usual, like at 1 p.m. Uh, Miami time, which is exciting for me, right? Um, so okay, and the I'll be back. professor back. Okay. Uh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the second Ted. Uh, okay. Oh, so, right. Oh, oh, all right. Um, Ted. Um, yeah. Ted Wong, you want me to, to to also make a short sentence about how I would describe uh, yes. or a phrase? Yes. Uh, yes. Let's start there. No, no, not no bullshit. No, yeah, just you know. Um, but I mean, he he's quiet. He was a quiet man, and actually, Guru Ted was quite quiet too. They have a lot in common, and right. their simplicity and refinement. So that's one thing. Both huge boxing fans, and boxing is a big part of their arts. Um, so, but the differences again. Well, I mean, again, how would I describe Ted Wong? Ted Wong is a uh, precision. Um, you know, he he comes from a background, um, chemical engineering background, and um, you know, it's all about detail. And he applied those details to what he learned from Bruce Lee and the direction that he took um, after uh, uh, Bruce's death, you know? Yeah, just, I don't know exactly how to say it, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I mean, it's, To, 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 this is how I would say the idea of developing to the utmost of your ability, right? Even something as simple as this, a swift kick and a couple of fast hands. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the idea that you have to do the, do that with one or two things first, because before you can apply it to whatever totality. Means. Right. Yeah. 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 In fact, I'll get this out right now because it ties into it. I once asked him, um, why do you think Bruce Lee chose the dominant side lead and lead tools as the primary weapons? And he said, you have to start somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So I, I know exactly what he meant by that. Right. He does believe you need to start there. But on the flip side, because he's a yin-yang man without admitting it, Ted Wong, mm -hmm. couldn't admit because he doesn't like philosophy, <laughs> but I forced him into it. You know, I right. said, but yeah. hey, philosophy and science are the same. He just would shake his head. And um, so, um, yeah, so, you know, the flip side of it is, well, you have to start somewhere, but why don't you start with what makes the most sense to you objectively before you go into the subjectives? Mm. That's how I look at it from my yeah. perspective now, from my perspective now. Yeah. I mean, I, I, so if I ever, if I ever reveal this, I'm sure, I'm sure somebody will, will, will have that question. Well, who do you think you are? When I started teaching kids, I realized it was easier to adopt something, a practice that I, that for me would have come from classical um, karate. It was easier to teach kids how to kick and punch from the rear yep. than from the lead. Of course. Yep. Right. You know, and it so easier. Yeah. Yeah. So we developed the Unified Martial Art Academy version of reverse punching. Hmm. Right. Yep. So, that, so that once they were really good at hitting from the rear, I'd yep. have them pose the rear hand. Yeah. And then snap forward and hit with the lead hand. So that uh, was our version of reverse punching. Right? Nice. <laughs> You know, and um, and but as they got older, because did, did you how much experience do you have teaching kids? Uh, a lot. OK. All right. They really don't fall into their bodies until they're like 14 or 15, do they? No, not at all. Right. <laughs> right? So, I mean, you know, I have to, I have two now. 
who are, uh, I, I think one's, one's 14 and one's 15, and they've been with me for about 10 years. Oh, that's lovely. Right. Yeah. yeah, they've been with me for 10 years. And, and it's only now that I can start to rough them up. Right. You know, really well, I, couldn't, God really love, couldn't before. God, they can win it so long, they're ready to get roughed up now. <laughs> So we got rained, we got rained out this week. So I just, I sent, uh, I sent a message to one of the moms. I go, okay, well, they got to show up tomorrow. Uh, otherwise they're going to, they're going to forget what I look like. And, and she, she sends me back. She goes, not a chance. <laughs> All right. But yeah. Um, so, so did, did Ted Wong, Did Ted Wong modify anything? Because you always hear Ted Wong taught only what Bruce Lee taught him. Right? Of course, he, of course, he modified it. He just didn't use that word. He used. He said, "Discovered within." <laughs> Mike Gilson. Mike Gilson is the same way. The, the mindset is different, and you have to respect the fact that that mindset allows them to be really good at what they do and that my this is that they don't create something they discover it from inside of it yeah and i'm okay with that i do that all the time as well well i mean somebody like you that probably happens to you on a weekly if not daily basis daily daily basis now, when it happens, so so when it happens to me, I call it an epiphanet, right? Yep. It, yep. It, might, it might just be a little thing, so it's not an epiphany; it's an epiphanet. <laughs> what do you what what do you what do you do with them? Do you record them? Yeah, I'll make a video of me doing it by myself, and then talk talk to myself. I'm good at talking to myself. I love myself. All right. <laughs> 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 when when uh, when I depart when I depart this uh, mortal coil, somebody is going to inherit the computer that has a folder on it called self conversation. Oh, good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you right. know, you're aware that I ride my bike like a madman, right? My bicycle. Yeah. Okay, so a lot of the things I come up with are on the bicycle. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That my mind goes in multi directions while at the same time being super aware of my peripheral vision and, and hearing and surroundings right. and it's excellent training. It's ninja Jedi shit, man. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, I use that used to happen to me when I, when I was a, a, a runner, I mean, I, I, um, I, I don't have the knees for running, um, too much anymore, but I travel I'm on public transportation, maybe twice, twice a, twice a week, right? Two days a week. And my notebook, I still have not, I have not embraced this stuff fully. So I don't make notes on this. I still do pen and paper. Yeah. You know, I go to BJ's and I get the stack of composition books and what have you. And, um, I still do pen and paper and, um, you know, and I have different methods for, for noting if it's something that needs to be transferred to the computer yeah. or if it, or if it can just stay, you know, in, in written form and, uh, and, and what have you, um, what, what's the latest epiphanet that you had? Because I, I know that you, because there was a time maybe a couple months ago where you were, you were putting video out every day. Yeah, all those videos are from um, one year to two years ago. And okay. so I was just sharing things that I was doing during uh, COVID lo lockdown. I was never locked down, but while the world was locked down, I rode my bike and went to it interesting locations in the, on the Gulf of Thailand and um, shot videos in instructional videos, solo videos. And um, so mm -hmm. I'm 
I was sharing some of those things. I made about, let me see, I guess it was about 50 hours altogether of videos. Yeah. 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 Um, well, I, I, I made a note of something here, right? Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll read it and you, and you tell us about it. Okay. Isolated, isolated rule sets in training and how they have created monsters. Yeah. Um, this is kind of qualifies, not qualifies. Um, can't think of the word right now, but um, what I mean to say is that if you take a combative sport, it's the best example I can give you. Mm -hmm. So you could choose something like fencing, boxing, and or Brazilian jiu-jitsu as sports, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll go in the boxing direction because it's my favorite and it's the two Ted's favorites. And that's why we gelled together because we all love boxing, you know. I loved boxing before I did martial arts, you know. Uh, and um, so anyway, uh, back to the point. So clearly boxing, uh, you can use the hands only. Um, you have gloves, you know, have equipment, weight categories, rules, um, and all things of that nature. And, um, but that isolated practice into that skill set has made boxing in general, okay, in general, um, so superior to other martial arts hand techniques in regards to punching that right. A lot of times, a boxer would beat a, 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 I won't say a better fighter, I'll say a more well-rounded individual who has aspects of everything. Mm -hmm. I would still, in most cases, not all, okay, but mm -hmm. in most cases, I'd put my money on the boxer if the, if the conditions were right. Yeah. And I know boxing needs more. I'm not saying boxing doesn't need more. Yeah. I mean, that... You can't only have boxing. You should have more than boxing. But what I'm saying is that it proves to me that isolation before integration is the correct path. Because if you yeah. do that, um, you will get so good at something that it will be that litmus for you, that example of how to get good at everything else that you do. And and not only that is that you'll be a badass before you need the other stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it, you're, you're, not, you're not saying that, that Mike Tyson could beat Bruce Lee. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I am saying that. <laughs> <laughs> right? But again, it's the what? It's the going deep versus going wide, right? Yeah, correct. Depth, yeah. I mean, depth before width. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, wait. Was, shoot. My Mike Tyson joke sent something out of my head. Uh, ah. Going back to the, what we were talking about earlier about Jeet Kune Do and its lack of expansion, let's call it. Yeah. Might one of the factors be that it has not been proven combatively? I mean, no, not combatively. It has not been uh, competitively? Yeah, there should, there should, it, it needs to be proven. Yeah. Yeah, it needs to be proven. And you only have, you know, examples of people from the, the AKD camps who compete. And, um, you know, the, the best example is, is like Conor McGregor. Yeah. And, yeah. The, the, you know, uh, and I, I saw that he was doing JKD before anyone told me he trained with JKD people. You know why that is? Because I know what I got an educated eye. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, because you're from that generation, right? Yeah. See, people from that generation said to me, oh, yeah. So people give Matt Thornton credit for the, the I method, right? Um, yeah. Isolation. Whatever. Well, it's correctly the I method because it's the Inosano method. It's it's the whole part whole method that Inosano was using in the 70s. So yeah, I well, wouldn't be. Yeah. I, I would say, okay, I'll have to, to um, I would say that the point that from the backyard and the Kali Academy days up until before the marina, that it was pretty much what you're talking about. I would say that after that, it became so octopus-like that maybe some of that 
perce people perceiving that it had that nature about it wasn't was yeah. not them anymore. Well, because see, because they came in at a different time. They came yep. in in a different era. They yep. came in in a different generation. So they yep. don't know what existed. And you know what? There are people. There there are people in this world who <laughs> they don't realize that the world existed before they came along. Yeah. Right? So it's well. This has been my experience of it. So that means it's like it's like if you go to New York today and five seconds you're you're in the subway and nobody gets attacked so you go oh new york must be safe yeah right right, right. <laughs> you know so it's like so they come along when things have changed and we're not talking about whether it was a good change or a bad change things yeah. change and no, so they don't know right yeah exactly. They don't know about what was going on before. And so they judge everything by present day standards, yeah. which is which is a huge, huge, huge mistake. Yeah, which gets you me. To, and I'm, though, I'm sure you'll agree. People's attention spans now. People's ability to really listen to what someone else has to say. My God. Yeah. So so this this podcast has more subscribers. But I guarantee you, if I was to check the analytics of it, right? So you and I have been talking for 60 minutes. Nobody sits through the whole thing. No, no way. No. Right? <laughs> well, it's like I did Dean's show the other day, and I couldn't hear or see what was going on with this Be Live because I had to be real far away. And we were off screen the first, I think, 20 minutes. And, um, right. And you could still make it out if, if you knew what was going on, but it, people, yeah. I, mean, I know they left right away, but there's some really good stuff in there. It's like, wow, I wanted to, I wanted to demonstrate this stuff forever, Ted Lukai Lukai stuff, you know, his progressive, his progressive, stuff, not the traditional one. And I got a chance to do it, but I'm sure that so many people just got turned off and left, you know? Yeah. Well, well you know, but, but, but hey, but that is, that's one great thing about the technology even though i got i got i got handed a lesson a couple of days ago because um at the end of class i just had this idea and so i did the whole thing um you know against the one two so if i lean back and kick and then i kick this way and yeah. then if i lean back and kick and then i kick this different way which one's jeet kundo and which one isn't man i got such a beating on that it's like oh well the distance was off and uh it wasn't realistic and uh this and that and i was like damn I was like, okay, Dwight, you got to make sure that whenever you put something out on social media, right, you got to kill people for real. <laughs> but, but, you know, again, obviously to me, they missed the idea of what, why you were showing it. You asked them a question <laughs> asked them to, ask them to tell you which one was JKD and which wasn't. You didn't ask corrections on your form and that shit. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, um, it's it's amazing. It it really is amazing. And that you know, the, and you know, there there's sometimes I find there's there's a serious lack of of etiquette on on the internet. You know, it's like people. So you and I are having a conversation. So I say something, you reply to it. I reply to your reply, and then somebody jumps in. Yeah. Right. And I'm thinking to myself. Yeah, but neither Mort nor I invited them, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. you know. So, so yeah. I take care. I'd say probably ninety nine percent of the time, if I have something to say, I'll just make it a separate comment. I don't jump into anybody's thread, you yeah. know, and yeah. because I, I I I wasn't invited. Yeah, you, you I, know. I think I carefully consider that as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I, 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 I love it. I love it because, because I love how seriously some people take it. Yeah, you know, um, and and it, it, but the amazing thing is that some people they don't see it as um, they don't see it as an opportunity for learning. You know, 
they don't see it as, a, as, as, as an opportunity to, to discuss ideas and what have you. It's just to tell people why they're wrong. What, you know, what it is that, that they don't know that they're doing and, 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 and what have you. Um, <laughs> it's very sad. It. It, very is. sad. it is. It is because it could be, it could be so, so much. Do, do you know if there's, if there, there is any martial art group on Facebook where it's all about video technique video and people constructively discussing yes yeah danny's basement boxing and combatives ah that is the place to be because okay. uh, um i assholes don't last there they're out and um we all love each other yeah man yeah no doubt mm -hmm. yeah okay all right i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna take a look at that because that might give me um I, I have been told, I have been told by, by yeah. people whose, whose opinions I, um, I, I, I respect, I have been told by them, yeah, you should get rid of so-and-so in, on the, I love Jeet Do page. Yeah. But you know, I, I mean, it, it's easy not to, because you don't want to be so strict, you know, I know I get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I caution the uh the other moderators i go look we're moderators we're not um we're, what, what's what's the word um we're not censors we're moderators not censors you know right so you 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 got you got you got to be careful so and yeah. so mick mick tully if you're listening right <laughs> yeah I'm a libertarian by nature so i totally agree with that yeah yeah yeah, I, I've uh, I've had to I've I've had to go to bat behind the scenes for a bunch of people, right? On on several occasions. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, because anyhow. Um, okay, so let's do uh, let's do one more from my notes. Yeah. Um, actually, we already well no let's go deeper. Okay. You said here's what you said. Now, hopefully you can remember saying this. <laughs> I never take a direction in teaching for the sake of making things more popular. Yep. Um, I prefer teaching master classes in two genres, combatives, defensives, and combative sports. Yep, yep. Um, yep. The floating genre of recreational is where, <laughs> this, was, this was pretty funny is where you find the cosplaying characters yep yep and i totally totally stand up for that kind of <laughs> but well I, but but see and then you know our, our buddy brooks long right you know who brooks uh, yeah i love brooks and uh he 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 he, he replied i love cosplay and i go i'm just being selfish dude come on get over it yeah yeah I don't, I don't love it. Cosplay's fine. I just don't want to be involved in it. Yeah. But now, but now if, you, if you think about it, right? I am sure there's a study somewhere that could, that could relate the development of cosplay to this as well. I guarantee you. Yeah. Right? There have always been Star Trek fans. Yeah. Right? But when you have the opportunity to dress up and transmit that image around the world yeah. and have everybody see you dressing up, I think it takes on, it takes on a, 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 a different import. Yeah, it's not 100% negative by any means. I mean, I, I, for certain, certainly, I mean, as a teenager, I could qualify as being one of those people. Oh yeah, yeah. Of course. I mean, yeah. I mean, I was into the the gi. I'd wear I'd wear gi to school. My gi top to school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, but then everyone started attacking me, which was good because it kept me on my toes. So I stopped wearing it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's because you didn't grow up British, man. If you'd grown up British, you would, you know, you would have had to wear a uniform. 
<laughs> yeah, that's true. Right? Yeah. 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 So we, yeah. So we, we couldn't, um, we couldn't do that kind of stuff. We, we had to, and we, what we, what, what we, um, what we live for was getting out of third form into fourth form because in lower first, first, second, and third form, you had to wear the short pants. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You see, so your skinny legs were on display, but in fourth form, you got to dress like Harry Potter and those guys with the white shirt and the and the gray slacks and the tie and the blazer. Hey, that's how it is in Thailand, exactly, man. Exactly. I knew you would know what I was talking about, right? Yeah. 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 And, and I, you know what? I think I think that there are advantages to that in terms of um, civilizing people. Yeah, I think. I mean, there's reason. You know? There's a reason. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that, that's why in the islands, we always used to say, I've said this before, we always used to say, okay, you, you, you let your kids go to school in the British system up until age 18, and then you let them go to America for college. <laughs> right? You see? Yeah. Because, yeah, because if they, if they, if they go, if they, if you graduate high school in the British system, you're probably two years into college the level yeah. of education yeah. you know so as long as it's a kid who's got his or her head on straight and is not and is not waylaid by the excesses of american culture in college <laughs> right you use yeah. uh, you use america to become more worldly yeah yeah it makes sense yeah you, you know you know what i mean yeah right yeah um, now see, so here's the thing, right? So, so what, what, what I just said to you now, let me put it to you this way. The statement Bruce Lee made, because this was something else that came up on the, I love Jeet Kune Do page about Bruce Lee, Jeet Kune Do and self-actualization. Yep. And my, my, re my response was, well, let Bruce Lee say it for himself. What did he say to Pierre Berton? Everything that I am, everything that I have achieved has come to me through martial art. Yep. I mean, is that is that not a statement with which you could identify? That's as that's how it's come to me as well. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I I I I think one one of the best things that happened in my life was the big boss. You know. I, yeah. I mean, I, I, I didn't know exactly what I was experiencing. Yeah. But it made an impression. I'm like, this is something different. Yeah. And that was it. You know, yeah. that's when, that's when the, that's when the quest started, you know? Yeah. So similarly for you and look at us now. Yeah. Look at us now laying, but you know, hanging out on a Friday evening, having Jeet Kune Do conversations, man. Yeah, it's it's lovely. I mean, I love where I'm at right now. I mean, like I say, I don't have any money, but I'm I'm all right without money. I, need, <laughs> I just need beer. That's all. Yeah. Well, you know, there, like, hey, there's um, there's riches, there's riches all all around us, you know. Yep. And um, I I going back to 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 Jeremiah's post, right? I've said this before. And I and you and I may even have discussed it. Bruce, uh, Bruce Lee was a business person, mm. for sure, right? Yeah. Bruce Lee read Bruce Lee read books on marketing and how to sell yourself and and, and what have you. Yeah. So what what then held held? Let's just answer Jeremiah's question, right? Why hasn't Jeet Kune Do flourished? Well, I, I'd have to say why. Why I'd have to answer that by saying why haven't I done the research that Bruce Lee did to be good at business, or like someone like that you have, you've done the research as well. Uh, it's just not appealing to me. I'm just um, I I'm only interested in things that interest me, <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I'm I'm sure. Uh, I should have, and I'm getting better at it now, but I've found my own way to get better at it. And, and, um, 
I like to stumble through things in, in the hard way. And then once I see a little daylight based upon my own method, then I begin to research right. on how to. And then yeah. I think, well, wait a minute. I, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I'm just so, I'm foolish. You know, I, I, that's how I am. Yeah. Right. So I'll, I'll show you something. So this book, right, by Brendan Burchard. So Brendan Burchard is, um, we could call him, we could call him like a modern day, a modern day Napoleon Hill or a modern day uh, um, a Norman Vincent Peale for the 21st century, right? Yeah. I, Bre Brendan's probably, he might be 40 years old by now. The Charge is a Jeet Kune Do book. Oh. Yeah, it's a Jeet Kune Do book. Right. Um, I, I remember once there, there's 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 a guy that I met in the marketing world, um, super successful guy named Frank Kern. And um, actually, I don't think I've ever said this. I So Frank Kern, uh, wh when I was with Dan Kennedy studying marketing and what have you, uh, Frank Kern did this video and he's in one section of his house. And off on, on camera but in the background you could see a, another section of his house and i think he was standing next to the bob marley picture <laughs> but in the background was the yeah. bruce lee picture oh. over his computer right and i remember i went with when i met him in person i was like frank you got to explain that to me right uh the the bob marley and the bruce lee thing he goes well they were both badasses ah <laughs> right you yeah, know it's so interesting where we draw our inspiration from i mean uh, i can't think offhand but i certainly have some some folks out there that have nothing to do with martial arts that have you know inspired me to be better at what i do you know yeah yeah i look to me mark it's all jeet kune do. it's all jeet kune do. i i am i am a i am a jeet kune do first person so even if i run a school and we do have a separate muay thai program yeah right we're not a muay thai school yeah we're a jeet kune do school that happens to have a separate muay thai program yeah and everybody will be made to understand that yeah you know it's it so for me it never was Oh yeah, Jeet Kune Do is one of the arts that we offer. No, yep. no, 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 no. Because where's the integration in that? I can I can relate because I I I've taught quite a few Muay Thai dudes, not um, not fighters unfortunately, but um, tough mm -hmm. tough Thai practitioners, but who are businessmen and just don't have the time to compete or their family wouldn't like it, blah, blah, blah. Right. And I taught them a lesson in Muay Thai on how to use Jeet Kune Do footwork and broken rhythm footwork, but applied to their structure. Exactly. And applied to their techniques and their high guard and all that stuff because it, it will still enhance it. It will right. still enhance So yeah. So doesn't that make Muay Thai an associated discipline? A Jeet Kune Do uh, associated discipline? Well, um, for us it would be, but um, so why do I get in so much trouble? <laughs> well, because because the blinders, the blinders. <laughs> but I was thinking more along from the Thai perspective. The Thais don't want to hear me say that shit. Oh, I I have I have a student who has been in Southeast Asia, April, for about six months now. Yeah. Right. And um, he's been both in Thailand and Cambodia. And he told me the other day, he showed them the idea of lead weapon consecutively. So yeah. like lead hand to lead to lead foot or yeah. vice versa. Yeah. And he says it blew their minds. It, it does. And it, ah. it well against them. Let me tell right. you. Yeah. 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 Isn't that hilarious? Well, okay. So I, I, I just thought of something else. So the subtitle of this book, right? Activating yeah. the 10 human drives 
that make you feel alive. Is that's Jikundo. Right? Yeah. I think that through through I think that martial art is a thing that like martial art is is it's gotta be one of the best things you can do for yourself. Uh, hey man. Yeah, you're preaching to the choir. I'm just, I'm going to be <clears throat> tomorrow. I don't know, wait, tomorrow's Saturday. Uh, Sunday, <clears throat> I'm teaching the first of four community service um, personal safety awareness and self defense courses as a community service at Gull Lake High School. And then another one is going to happen uh, later on in November um, for the community center, just the general community. Mm -hmm. And the same message that, that I'm trying to get across is that. If you if you enjoy living, right? If you enjoy life and have um, respect for the precious gift of life, um, you have no excuse not to be super aware of your surroundings and learn, in the worst case scenario, how to defend yourself. It just, you know, we've drifted too far as a modern society in this convenient world, highly stressful but yet convenient world, right? Bullshit world and. Um, uh, we've lost all of the things that got us here in regards to survival and um, health and things like that. It's, it's a downhill slide. People better get their act together, man. <laughs> and anyway, I mean, I'm, I'm going, I'm going into a rant now. But my message to them is: Look, is if you respect life, and you know what, what it is, what do you do to pamper yourself, right? Oh, well, I go uh, buy cream for my face to look young. I said, Oh, that's good. So, um, but. You don't know about how having a strategy and tactics to support your awareness and how to defend yourself. Well, no. Well, so, uh, well then you're not going to probably be around too long to enjoy that cream that you're going to put right. on your face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, you know, that's an example. No, because no, because because <clears throat> I mean, okay, so you're buying that cream to make yourself look young, which is a synonym for making yourself look attractive, right? Yeah. So do, do you not know that you can attract the wrong type of person? Exactly. Exactly. Right? There's so, so much. What, yeah. Yeah. I, people don't want to hear this. They don't want to hear that from me. Some will. I imagine, you know, maybe 10% uh, out of the entire crew will get something mm -hmm. from it. Like, uh, uh, yeah. 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 No, I, I remember, I remember I was told once by, um, I think it, I think, is it Harry Dean? It, this this guy this guy is, is, is one of the one of the well known um, uh, financial advisors out there and he and he told me he goes that market that you're in he goes if you want to make more money sell fear that's what he told me right now obviously I didn't follow his advice a hundred percent right because if I had, I would have flown you to Miami and we would have done this like Joe Rogan does it. Right? Yeah, but, exactly. But he's not wrong. No, he's not wrong um, because, again, it ties into the binary thought process. You have yeah. to scare them, and but you shouldn't have to because you don't want them to be scared. You want them to be uh, aware. Yeah, right. So yeah. we can finish up on this note because – it's what we started out this conversation with. Yeah, it's in the middle. Correct. It's not. It's not that rabid fear. No. It's the conversion of that fear into awareness, right? Yeah. So it's the middle yeah. path. Yeah. I mean, you, you. The difference between. Um, there's these the two ways to look at it mentally, right? Is that you'll get a camp that says you have to, you have to use anger, you have to use fear, and turn that into adrenaline that defeats your opponent through gross motor skills. Okay, there's that side. Then there's the side that says no, you constantly work on refinement. And for example, let's talk about power, the, the power obsession. If you're obsessed with power in, mentally, you'll always telegraph, you'll always make mistakes. 
you can still be effective sometimes, but in the wrong time, it'll it's what gets you killed. You have to do things correctly at the right time, minimum effort, maximum result. And that mindset is not one of losing control. It's, it's being in control, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you want the other guy to lose control. You want to maintain control. Both people losing control is it makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. I remember um, at my marketing conferences, um, uh, this guy, uh, Perry, Perry, what was Perry's last name? I forget his last name, but he, he wrote a book on, a marketing book on the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule. Hmm. And I, I remember, I remember we went to a breakout session of his and um, I, I don't know if he and I had had the conversation before, but for some reason, he's, he's, he says, he says to the group, he goes, okay, put your hands up if you have high level training in martial art. <laughs> and he says, look around the room. It was about 80% of the people in the room. He goes, it makes perfect sense because the discipline that it needs to train in martial art is the same kind of discipline that it takes to be an entrepreneur. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. so, so Perry, Perry Marshall, that's the guy. Um, Perry and I had some great conversations, but cause he, cause you know, you know what all, you know, who all these entrepreneurs admired, like I told you the story about Frank Kern, hmm. they all, they all love Bruce Lee. That's really interesting, man. They all loved Bruce Lee. And, and the reason why I was so loyal for 10 years, 12 years to Dan Kennedy and Bill Vazor is because my very first conference with them, the way they were talking, I was like, this is Jeet Kune Do. Well, Bruce Lee was obsessed, number one, but he was comprehensive at the same time. So it wasn't just like one side of the coin. You know, it was, it was his view of totality. He pursued that uh, obsessively. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A hell of a thing. Okay, my friend. Yep. 7.30. I'm sure you got stuff to do. Yeah, let me you tell you one story, and uh, it's because I'm about to fall asleep. I went to my original dojo today that I started at when I was 14 years old in 1974 and actually took the lesson as a white belt today um, for nice. the first time in 30 years. The first time in 30 years. Nice. And uh, I'm tired as hell. It's not like riding a bicycle at all. It's completely different than what we do. And um, But I have some unfinished business, so I'll be going um, the rest of the time until January 5th till I go to the West Coast. I'll be going every every week. That's interesting. you got to come yeah. back and tell us about that. I will. And that's Okinawa and Karate. Which you rule? Hey! There you go, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Thank you so much. All right, man. Okay. Have a great evening. Get some Get some rest. All right, thank you so much. Okay, my pleasure, man. Take care. Bye. Bye. All right, always a good time talking with, uh, what happened to my mouse? Talking with uh, with Mark. Okay, so um, you guys know the deal. Uh, comment. Uh, I'll ask Mark to uh, review everything after posting and see if there's anything here I need to uh, um reply to uh follow me on twitter at dwight woods on instagram at dwight d woods at uh, paypal.me unified ma miami the excuse me g Kondo journey volume one raw but edited uh is available paypal.me slash unified ma miami um i told you if if you join late next friday we'll be on with uh joe ferris out of out of uh uh, Ireland, um, probably at 1 p.m. Eastern time. So maybe you guys won't be able to make it. You'll still be at work or something, right? Um, but uh, you'll know where to where to uh, find it uh, afterwards. Okay, yeah, I'm like I'm with Mar. I think I'm gonna go get some sleep too. Got to wake up early. Got to get to the park early tomorrow morning. All right. So uh, until the next episode, this is Dwight Woods, the G Kano Rebel, signing off. You guys have a great evening. Have a great weekend. Uh, stay safe. Talk soon. Take care.